Bit just fired a dead fly at me. Have you ever been like oblivion and you know you just drop and you feel like you've left half your body? Oh my god! Ah! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today we are going to have a look at one of my more recent auction purchases. Uh, I had one of these in stock recently and it, I was planning to do a video on that but sold it before I got the chance. I wanted to buy another one in for stock anyway. They're just, I've been really impressed by these cars. So I thought we'd get another one in, we'd do a video and I think it's gonna sell quite well anyway. Uh, bought it from BCA Bristol. I can't remember exactly how much for it at this point. I think this probably arrived at the end of last week. You might have seen in the weekly, Dan bringing this back. And this will be my first time really kind of looking around it properly and we'll take it out for a test drive as well. So let's have a look what we got. And here is our 2020 tesla model 3 performance so this is a dual motor meaning it's four wheel drive and it is the equivalent of about 462 brake horsepower i believe and i actually think it's a really good looking car as i say the last one i had was in white which was the base color that was just the uh, pretty much the only color you could have for free i think and this one's obviously in this nice almost like dolphin gray isn't it and i just thought if i was going to buy another one i was going to buy one that didn't have the standard color on it it's got the nice alloy wheels in it as well. I think, I don't know whether they were on Optical Electra at the time, but I think they are now. It does look very nice and it looks like there's a few optional kind of extras on here or aftermarket extras, I should say. I mean, most obviously with an armor plate. It is a 20 plate or a 70 plate, but it didn't originally come with the Tez number plate. That is with the car now though. And you know, it fits with the car, I guess. I'll be quite honest. I've never really been a fan of cherished number plates related to the model of the car, the model or make of the car. That's already written on the car. You don't need to have it again. It's like having a Land Rover and having a, a number plate that says Land R or something. Mm, I just I just don't get it. I'm not a, a huge private number plate fan anyway. Although I'm getting more converted these days, but something related to the driver I feel is more you know, important than having a Renault Clio with a number plate that says Clio. Just why? We already know it's a Clio. Anyway, Mini ran over. Prior to the one that I had before, I had only ever been in one Tesla. Um, one of our previous uh, finance reps, a bloke called Pete Chapman, he um, came in, he had one, he'd got one with his like company car, let me go out, take it out for a drive, and I was impressed on whatever, but I'm not sure he had the performance. He might have done. If he did, I probably didn't put my foot down as hard as I should have done. Um, so, yeah, the last one was my first real experience of it. And I've got to say, I, I'm converted. I think they are, like, incredible cars. The range is really good. The performance is, like, incredible. It's something completely different. And they've got all the tech you could possibly want, as you'd imagine. So let's have a little wander around, and I'll tell you, you know, all the things that, you know, I know about it, which is going to be very minimal. But the things that I've picked up on so far. For a start, we have got these carbon fiber little sort of spats on the front. They weren't original, they've been added on. It's a shame that the lacquer is going a little bit on it there, but on the whole, it looks quite cool, I think. They've got some carbon fiber. I mean, it is genuine carbon fiber as well. Little covers for the lights there. They wouldn't have been genuine. It's not the original number plate, as we've said, that Tez is a change number plate afterwards. We've got the nice wheels. I assume that was the original color that they were, but you know, they, they suit it well, I think. Um, and it's all sort of, all the trims are done out in black, but I think they're like that anyway. I could be wrong. All the Tesla fans will let us know in the comments. Being electric, you do have a, a frunk and a trunk. So quite practical, really. Uh, you got cameras like pretty much everywhere. So you got one in like the indicator type thing there, one in the side of the door there. I don't know where else, definitely on the back obviously, and on the front. Um, but I particularly like these ones because as we may see later on in the video, when you're inside and you indicate, that will activate that camera. So you've got like a, not just your wing mirror, but you've also got your camera display on there. You've got these door handles, which um, kind of like fold out. They're quite cool, but they're also a bit of a nuisance, to be honest. If you've got your hands full and you've only got one hand and you kind of just want to grab a handle and open it, uh, if you're carrying a lot of stuff, you just want to just be able to just yank on that. And if, if you've got a light press and then get hold of it, can be a bit of a nuisance but minor gripe i suppose we've got uh, carbon fiber side skirt trim things on here as well 
as far as the carbon fiber extras go on this not my favorite add-on but some people are gonna love it I'm sure uh, in fact I hadn't even noticed before but we've got carbon fiber trims around some of the rear lights as well we've got a carbon fiber rear boot lip which again the lacquer is peeling on not quite not quite sure what we'll do with that but we'll try and figure it out obviously you've got electric boot as you have electric everything on here uh, this is where your charging port is i don't really know that because i've probably seen it in videos and uh, the white one that we had before is actually currently in our showroom waiting to go out being picked up at about two o'clock today it's now five past one um, and we wanted to put it on charge so we just put a bit of juice in and uh yeah you press a button and that pops open and that's that nothing much else to report on this side you get a nice panoramic roof on them a really big windscreen as well so visibility in here is ridiculous um we have got a bit of a funky reaction going on here now is, is that a genuine thing or is it being wrapped um not sure but they've definitely had some really strong chemicals on there that's what's caused this so i think we might need to like polish that up because there's a bit of a satin i don't know the valet lads will have a look at that for us but at the moment it just looks a little bit grotty to be honest so We'll have a look inside, but that means opening it. And there is no key, there's no physical key. Uh, and it, to be fair, the last one took me quite a while to figure out how you actually, well, it was unlocked, but how you lock it. So obviously you get your Tesla key cards. This one does have two. Well, I say that, it did have two, but one of the big downsides of having a card system like this is they are like ridiculously easy to lose. You think about how easy your phone slips out of your pocket when you get in a car or your keys fall out of your pocket or change these are like they're made out of like teflon so they're just like just slide away like anything they just fall out your pockets um i very nearly lost them in the past and they're not the easiest thing to find as well either if you're you know looking around the house for it and one of the valets has lost one of them somewhere we think it's probably fallen out of their pockets when they were moving around with other cars so we just don't know where it is at the moment but dan tells me if you want a replacement it's actually quite easy you just order it through the portal on your computer screen in there uh, they send out a new card it's about 100 quid which is not bad as far as keys go and you kind of just like put it in and it programs it for yourself so then you get a spare so actually a really simple system you can put it on your app so that as soon as you get close to the car it will open you could put it on if you've got like an apple watch you could unlock it with that using the rfid and one of the things that i actually felt like would be the most simple solution for me and would probably make me you know i feel a bit geeky about it but it would just genuinely genuinely i should say would be the most kind of simple solution is you can get like rings that have the rfid chip in it so you literally just put your hand up against the side of the car and it will unlock because what you do with your card currently is you would just hold it up against the pillar and there we are that is it unlocking if you want to lock it again that is it locked it's a bit annoying that it's got the beep on i'm sure we can turn that off so you all know i hate beeps uh so that is that let's have a little hop inside so hasn't been cleaned properly yet so bear that in mind but i can tell you already having driven the other one these seats are really really comfortable steering wheels are quite nice to use as well and the carbon fiber theme continues in here so we've got little carbon fiber instep things whatever you'd call them um and we've got this carbon fiber dash piece now i know for a fact only because i watched it in another video probably car wow or something that these only come with a wooden trim. Some people put Alcantara on there, which I think is quite a nice look. And you can obviously buy these carbon fiber trims to go in here, which um, is obviously not original. Some people aren't gonna like, but I think some people will. I think it's, it fits in quite well, because it's quite a dark kind of sleek interior, very minimalistic. Obviously, you've just got that massive screen in the middle um, and nothing else really. Although you've got these two kind of like scroller wheels on here, which you can program to do pretty much anything um it's incredibly hot in here and it feels like the heaters are on i don't know if someone's left it with the heaters set on um but we'll figure that out in a minute obviously you've got electric uh, adjustable seats quite a lot of space in the back and nice comfortable nice looking seats as well then you've got a very good sized boot with a power motor can you fold the seats down? It looks like you probably can fold the seats down. Just needs a really good valet in here. And then close it up again. There we 
we go. Let's have a little hop inside and we'll talk about some of the other features. So as I say, it is very comfortable in here, other than the heat, which we will look at. We'll flip the camera around now and we'll look at what is obviously like the main feature in this car, which is the big infotainment screen, uh, which does everything on this car, which is a bit of a nuisance. You've probably seen loads of other reviews. I'm not going to really bore you with a, a Tesla review. I just want to give you my opinion on it and then we'll talk about the figures at the end. I just think, yeah, it's impressive, but tricky to get your head around. So here it is. Here's our... Let's just turn it right down on oh, cold because it feels roastingly hot in here. You do have kind of like normal window switches, so we can put those down. I mean, if you want to get out, you just press a button and it electronically unlatches the door and then you push it open. So we can do all sorts in here, half of which I haven't got a clue about. Um, it took me a while to figure out how I was going to figure out what my battery range and thing was, but you, this is your sort of battery power gauge up here just exactly like your iPhone it feels very similar of an iPhone to be honest and you can pop your, your frunk your trunk you can lock and unlock you can do your electrical charging port thing here let's have a look at you can do your DAB and whatever connect your phone and all that sort of stuff one thing I haven't done but I think some of the guys here have, you can play games and stuff in here uh, retry install I guess you've got to be connected to Wi-Fi or your phone or something. There are plenty of all sorts on here. Bit gimmicky, I think, but you know, I mean, it would be good. Uh, if you're gonna have to sit around and wait while the car charges, which is one of the drawbacks of an electric car, then it's quite good to have that, I guess. Dash camera. So I guess that's with the built-in. You can look at the recordings. I wonder if you can see me walking around it any time earlier. No idea. It goes back so far, I guess. I don't know. Other people will know loads about this. Oh, yeah. Here's another... Here's an event. It probably was when it was with its previous owner. Tesla probably shouldn't be showing us this. I don't know what's going to happen here. Maybe there's a near incident or something. Mm, no, it's very uneventful. And obviously you get your sentry thing as well, so you can... I don't know if it does it automatically. Oh, it's not on currently. Uh, it like has its own CCTV system. You know, people have got those stickers in their car saying, warning, 24 hour CCTV in operation. They just mean they've got a dash camera. This really does have it. You know, if someone comes and mucks with your car at night, the car will record it for you, uh, which is very neat. As I say, we've got this absolutely huge panoramic roof that goes all the way back. There's only one, really one bar in the back there. So you've got absolutely loads of visibility. The bonnet and dashboard is really low because there's like nothing there really. So visibility out in front is really good. Uh, it feels a bit weird in a sense. It feels a bit like, I don't know, it feels like you're driving like a little buggy or something, but you know, you can't knock it. Practicality wise, it is very good. And as I say, let's have a quick look. Whether it, will it indicate? Yeah. So as we indicate now, that is my left hand camera coming on. I think normally if you're driving along, it will be bigger. Or maybe you can, yeah, so I guess you just drag it around to wherever you want it maybe it can be bigger I'm sure there's so much like customization you can do on here um, which I haven't got a clue about and I won't bore you with either but yeah right seat all your stuff is in here Apple music whatever all that sort of stuff browser god forbid what comes up now oh look it's on car wild dealer auctions I wanted to talk to you about Carwell Dealer Auctions because they've just made a huge announcement that makes their service even more game-changing. They have just launched a Sell My Car feature on Auto Express, a brand they bought earlier this year, which is one of the UK's biggest automotive publications. So they're now marketing directly to consumers to sell their car, and all of those cars end up on the exclusive Carwell Dealer Auctions page. The great thing about Carwell Dealer Auctions is that it doesn't cost you anything to join. There is absolutely tons of choice and you can search down and find exactly the type of car you want. So say for example, we are looking for Teslas. We want to find ones at an absolute bargain. I filtered out here all the Teslas to look at and they're all actually really great prices. So this one here, only currently on £16,430. You can go through all the pictures that tell you all about all the service history, 
And the greatest thing is you can turn up and you can test drive these cars for yourself and make sure they're actually what you want to buy. And you can also use some of their groundbreaking services. They've recently announced two game-changing services. One called CarWow Collects, which is a vehicle transport service with a built-in assured service. So if anything turns up with that car that you weren't expecting, certain things are going to be covered and you'll have up to £25,000 worth of guarantee. And there is also CarWow BuySafe. So if you're using your own transport, you can have cover of up to £7,500. So not only is the choice second to none, not only can you find cars directly on your doorstep rather than having to travel far to auctions, the fees are also really great and they have a load of these great new services with an even broader market. If you are a car dealer and you're struggling for stock and you haven't tried Carwell dealer auctions yet, I highly recommend checking them out. Check the link in my description, it'll take you straight there and you can set up your account for free. Right, let's get back to our Tesla. That's all of locked us in. Um... Here's all our cameras by the looks of it. I'm sure there are more actually. So that's the rear. And there is a front one. And then setting, navigation, sentry. Let's put that on. Steering wheel. If you want to adjust it, you've got to do it through the screen here. So, oh no, you do it through this now. Um, and then in and out. Oh, I go right, do I? Okay, so it's all using the. Where do I want it? Uh, about there will be okay. Uh, so let's save that. Autopilot. I don't think that's currently turned on on this one. Um, yeah, it is. Auto steer. It's a beta tester thing. We'll check all that as we go out. There's just tons of stuff in here. It can get a bit boring, to be honest, going through it. But if you're into that sort of stuff, then quite exciting. There's loads of stuff you can customise. Um, and, yeah, it's... It's just, the one thing I like about it is if I was to think out things in the car to make them better, they've done it. You indicate left, the indicators come on. You're driving along, it will show you on the screen all the stuff that's in front of you, whether that be cars, bikes, motorbikes, bins on the road. It kind of shows them and will warn you about them. You can put it into uh, autopilot and drive itself down to just these little bays under here in Alcantara to like rest your phone. I would have thought that they would have been wireless charging bays, but I don't think they are. Every time I put my phone in there... Oh no, oh no, it is charging. I mean, that would make sense, yeah. So it's charging my phone, just lying there, perfect position, cup holders, massive storage bin in here, massive storage in the other armrest. Um, glove box. So if you want to do the glove box, you've got to do that via the screen as well. Uh, I mean, you want to just open your glove box, don't you? But, you know, you, you can't. You've got to do it via this screen thing. I don't know how well the screen's showing up on the camera, by the way, so apologies if you're just looking at nothing. But uh, what do we do? Go to car. Glove box. There we are. And then it opens. Bit of a faff, to be honest with you. That is a bit of a faff. Oh, we've got a Tesla cleaning cloth by the looks of it, and a little Tesla. What have we got? Roadside assistance. Yeah. Cool, and makes sense. Less switch gear, less stuff to go wrong other than your massive screen. Once you're used to it, it's going to be easy, isn't it? It's like a new phone. Once you're used to it and you know how everything works and how you do a screenshot and all that sort of stuff, you know. But getting used to it can be tricky. Let's pop the frunk. Oh, there we go. Sounds like it almost jumped off the car. And then <clears throat> we'll take it out for a drive. This is where I'd normally show you the engine, but obviously there was nothing much to show you. You've got enough space in there to get a reasonable sized suitcase. Not a huge amount more. Um, definitely wouldn't get a dead body in there. So don't rely on it for that. But, you know, it's better than no storage space, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so let's get it out on the road and I'll tell you what makes this like really interesting when you're driving it. One thing that takes a bit of getting used to but I actually quite like is the fact that like in an automatic you put your foot on the brake and you come to a stop you let your foot off the brake and you start rolling so it's much easier than doing a manual car where you've got to do the clutch and accelerator and all that sort of stuff. Whereas in this because it does like the regenerative braking I let my foot off and it will come to a stop so if you're sat in traffic you can just completely ignore the pedal until you want to move off and it's nice and responsive and smooth and you 
if you are not sure you're going to slow down again you just kind of let your foot off again and you start slowing down got to try and figure out something with it should be blowing everywhere for air conditioning but I'm still feeling very hot so it says it should be blowing everywhere I suppose I can turn it up a little bit what do these mean? What to... that's, oh, that's windscreen and rear screen. Ugh. That's definitely cooler. It just fired a dead fly at me. Oh no. You see why people sort of moan about them being, you know, distracting, doing everything by this big screen. But again, once you're used to it, once you're used to it. So as you can tell, we're going along a nice bumpy road. It's pretty comfortable, to be honest. We have got double glazed windows as well, I should say. So it's quite nice and quiet. Most things are a bit noisy on here. The 7 Series, for example, that you can win on Feel Good Competitions for a pound, is much more quiet and comfortable than this. But... That's still actually pretty impressive on performance, that thing. But it's not as impressive as this, I have to say. Because while this will drive you down the motorway in autopilot mode, and all you have to do is give it minimal input, it will slow down, speed up, indicate, pull off, do all that sort of stuff for you. What's truly impressive is just how this thing accelerates. And in fact, I probably won't do too much of it because it tends to just make me feel a bit unwell. I should look up actually what the 0-60 on this is because I think it's around about three seconds which is like supercar fast for £19,000. Complete stop, let's... Oh my God! Ah! Honestly, it... It's <laughs> actually quite embarrassing, but it just... It's like... Have you ever been like Oblivion at Roller Coaster at wherever it is, Thought Park or whatever? And, you know, you just drop and you feel like you've left half your body behind you. Oh. It is bizarre. My eyesight's gone funny as well. That's the first time I think I've actually really, like, planted my foot. And, uh, completely from a standstill. I feel like I need to go and get my glasses. The one thing I've reason I need glasses for is when I'm driving along or moving around I just feel like my eyes can't focus quite quick enough feels like things are coming towards me too quickly and now that I've done that my eyes just feel awful I feel like they're trying to escape by the back of my head I've got to close one eye then we can experience the power brakes aren't the best for a car that's this quick I have to say a bit stiff and kind of not much feedback such a bizarre feeling where there's just been no sound but that acceleration. I don't know, I'm sure there's like ways. Oh, it's warning me of things that are close to the car. There's ways of putting it into like faster modes, maybe, but. It makes you feel like you're having a blood brush or something. <laughs> I actually quite like the sort of. <laughs> electric noise. I know everyone's going to be like, oh, there's no soul because it hasn't got an engine noise. It's quite cool. It makes you feel like you're in, I don't know, Blade Runner or something. One of those 80s sci-fis that I grew up on. Ugh. You, you do start to get used to it, although I am still feeling getting like, almost like a pins and needles feeling when you accelerate hard. It's that quick. I know everyone's going to be calling me a wimp and... I'm overstating it, but... How's that effect on me, anyway? I think this one feels like the regenerative braking is much stronger than the last one. Uh, and I'm sure that is adjustable to suit. I think I preferred it slightly more on the, the other one that we had that wasn't quite as aggressive with it. But as I say, I'm sure you can adjust it in the vast array of settings. On top of all the gadgets and how quick it is, I think my favourite thing about this is it's just super easy to drive. Comfortable, 
easy, got everything you want, the Bluetooth, everything works as it should. And all the added extra little features, like I say, like when you indicate it shows you the extra cameras, the fact that your dash camera is built in, the fact that it's got a genuine CCTV system built into it, your phone charger is already in there, you just don't really need anything else. And when you create your account, you can just set it up on your phone, you don't really need anything else. It really is just so easy. And overtaking by cyclists is certainly not a problem. But the range on these things, again, everyone's going to be telling me that I got the facts and figures wrong. I'm not stating that I know exactly for sure. I'm far from an expert. I'm more interested in how well this is going to sell and how much this is going to sell for, which we will get to. We'll go through that when we get back in the office in a minute. But I think they're around about 400 mile range. I would never need more than that. Not in one sitting, you know, without an overnight stop. I just think it's perfect for a lot of people. Some of the other EVs that don't have as much range, uh, yeah, not so great. You want to get a first gen Leaf, like we might have talked about in one of the podcasts we did the other day, with a range of, say, like 35 miles. It's pretty much useless to all but anyone who lives in like a little town and just wants to pop to the shops. But this, you know, 400 miles, very few of us are doing 400 miles in one night about an overnight stay with a car could completely charge even from like a household plug once you've got over the novelty of like you know how quickly it accelerates all the gizmos and gadgets the games the fact that you can make whoopee cushion noises in different corners then you know it's not that exciting of a car I don't think other than doing that but the novelty hasn't worn off of me yet so it's not you know like buying something with an exotic engine that sounds amazing but as an everyday hack pretty damn impressive and quite like an exciting proposition I think to people who aren't petrol heads people who just like new things gizmos gadgets and things that they think are like nice and flashy I know my other half it's not hugely into car stuff would love a Tesla easy it's got all the features you want all that sort of stuff she would love anyway all that stuff aside as I say the most important thing to me is how much money we might be able to make from this car and how little problems hopefully it will present for us so I'll meet you back in the office and we'll talk through the numbers back at the computer I'm on my dealer kit portal again if you're interested in a dealer management system for your garage then check them out and let them know that Joe sent you I'm looking at all of our expenses and our valuations and things like that what I didn't mention before was obviously that this is on about 98,000 miles so it's a bit leggier that's probably why it you know represents really good value uh, currently Auto Trader says the valuation is 18,000 853 that's 100% and I think we're priced at 102% which is still a good price marker uh, which we are at £19,395 um, with quite a lot of interest it's performing very well on our uh, auto trader portal because these are quite popular at the moment uh, so with our expenses uh, we are looking at an SIV standing value of £16,479.36. So we're definitely the right way up on this. But I will go into the details of what we've paid. So my bid 
at auction, my winning bid was £15,800. On top of that, including VAT, was £488 of uh, buyer's fee, which I think is about £406, something random like that. Uh, and we had to pay their BCA assured report fee, which was more expensive because it was an EV or a hybrid. So uh, that was £47 plus the VAT, which is £56.40. I think we've also put a tyre on this, which was 13496 uh, which gives us our standing value of 16,479.36 pence, which means profit wise, if we sell for that and we don't need to do too much more to it, probably gonna need to spend a little bit because we probably want to sort out some of those minor like lacquer bits on the uh, carbon fiber, stuff like that. But otherwise it's not gonna be a huge amount. Uh, we are looking at a net margin after we've paid our VAT on the margin that we'll make of 2,407 pounds and 20 pence. Not bad at all. That is a 12.4% return on investment, it tells me. So I'm very happy with that. We've only had it in stock, it says currently, for 12 days, but that's because we loaded it on the day that we bought it, not the day that we collected it. And I think give it maximum two more of that, 24 more days, it'll be gone. I don't think even that long. Give it another couple of weeks and I think it will be gone. They are popular at the moment. I think it's just because they represent loads of value. So on the whole, very happy with that indeed. So, you know, if you're looking to stock that sort of thing, I highly recommend the Teslas. I'm not so sure about the lower value EVs, but you know, the premium ones and the performance ones like I've been buying, then I think they're the ones to have a look out for. Keep your eye in on the CarWow dealer auctions. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. It will really help me out. And if you haven't already, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and in return, I am giving away this a very nice £4,000 Tudor Black Bay GMT with the Pepsi dial. Those of you who watch the channel know that I've got a bit of an addiction to Pepsi, so it seems only right that this was the watch that we choose. I absolutely love this. It's absolutely gorgeous. It won't cost you anything to subscribe. It won't cost you anything to enter the competition for this when we do hit 100,000. We have literally just this week posted off our Tag Heuer watch for when we hit 75,000, and we're already at 80, so we're very close get on board. I'd really appreciate it. And you could be in a chance of winning this watch. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.